Hi, and what we're going to do tonight is we're going to look at the four factions that we know about so far for Conflict 47. And, um, yeah. So, one of the things I've always been a little bit uneasy about with bolt action, one of my, one of my kind of more bugbears is, compared with a lot of games, there's not a ma I feel as if there hasn't been the same differentiation. There hasn't been that same variety going on. And I think Conflict 47 really, really, really hits that. It hits it very head on. I think it changes the, the whole dynamic a lot. So, let's look at them. We're going to look at Germany, America, Britain and Russia. Because those are the four that we know about so far. And we're going to see how they work together. And see what, see what to make of them. So the first thing, let's have a look at Germany. Germany, in terms of their special rules, you get initiative training. But the, um, which basically means that an NCO is killed, you get a chance of getting somebody to stand up in their place. You get the buzzsaw rule, which you had in bolt action. You get the resurgent, uh, Fatherland resurgent, which means that German infantry units larger than five may ignore the negative modifier of one pinning marker when making an ad when taking advance order tests, which is great. You also get um, if the shirts and armored skirts. If a tank is shirts and upgrade, then uh, Things like bazookas and stuff like that, and anti-tank rifles, never get the plus one penetration bonus for hitting it. So those are pretty good. What is um, different is the, the flavour. And this is where Conflict 47 really brings it in. Because those special rules have been about for a while. But the flavour here is very different. So what you're getting is the heavy armour, or the heavy uh, infantry, for instance, for the Germans, tends to be very a little bit primitive, very early, um, well armoured, but not necessarily going to give you many other bonuses. Um, and it goes so it, it's kind of um, they're they're a bit early off the mark, so there's quite an advantage there. The Germans feel quite a horror, um, kind of weird science um, faction. So you've got in there the Totenkor which are the, the zombies. You've got Shrek and Shrek Wolfen, which are um, w werewolves in effect. And then you've got a kind of vampire faction, a vampire unit, which is the Nachtjäger, uh, which are kind of flying and can rip and, and can kind of tear um, armour to pieces with, its, with their hands. On top of that, you've also got their walkers. Now, the units are actually given quite a lot of differentiation. There was some differentiation in bolt action, but it's been exaggerated by this. Um, so what you're getting is your walkers are four-legged. Um, as you can see here, we've got um, the Thor Heavy Panzer Mech, which hasn't been released yet. Um, but you've also got, if I can find it, the Zeus Heavy Panzer Mech, which is also a four-legged thing and is slow. Um, and then you've got the spine, which is the one that came out in the um, in the starter pack. Um, so the with that, there's some really nice stuff you can do with that. You can actually upgrade to flamethrower. Then you can close the top, remove the top, put flamethrower in, and that's quite nice. So it becomes quite an effective anti-infantry unit um, weapon. Um, and, it, and and those are nice, and they kind of feel the, they feel quite cool. You've also got in your tanks. I'm trying to find it. A yeah, you've got the from quite a formidable one, in that you've got a kind of grav cannon, pan um, the the Schwerfeld projector, which basically hurts things that are heavily armoured, which is quite cool. And these give the Germans a very distinct feel. There's your spine, um, and your think that's the Thor. It gives you a sort of six legs, it's not four. Oh there you go. Um it gives you a kind of quite horror, quite um weird science feel to them. Going to the Americans it's slightly different. So the US what you're looking at predominantly here is you know the, the big standout is their walkers. Their walkers are, are really where they come into their own but they've also got some flying guys you can sort of see here. So you've got Firefly Jump Infantry. So speed is of the essence with these guys. And their special rules, they've got plentiful supplies so they can re-roll rules of one whenever they're shooting. 
they've got fire maneuver, the same as they have for bolt action, they've got modern communications which means that when units take the order test to move from reserve onto the table they do not have minus one penalty and they've got a gyro stabiliser which means that, that whenever they're moving it's easier for the tanks to, to shoot. Those things so far so, so similar but the speed aspect of the American troops really comes in whenever we start to look at these Firefly Jump Infantry. So basically they can fly, which means they can move very very fast indeed. They get tank hunters and effectively they're flying infantry which is, is quite quite cool. Um, then you've got Heavy Infantry, I'm going to see if I can find them. Heavy Bazooka Team, Heavy Infantry Squad. With these guys the big difference is that they don't have a slow roll compared to the German ones. Um, they're faster, they've got an assault rifle again, they're a little bit more expensive, they've got infrared and they've got tank hunters potentially as well. So they're less than anti infant they, they've got grenades as well but they've got some advantages. So they're quite cool but if you look at their walkers the other thing that stands out is their walkers are bipedal. Now that's quite cool um, but let's have a look, we've got a tank to get to first. They do have the Sherman TT, um, which basically can shoot um, electric pulses. Now, from what I can recall, that means that it has some rather nice rules. And basically, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it can... Um, it has got the ability to fire in two different sort of styles. Uh, I can't find it. I'll check through for a second. But it can fire two, a couple of different ways. So it can fire a way that's very good against um, infantry and skips along, sort of like lightning bolts jumping between um, between Infantry's, infantry, or it can really zero in. Now I'm going to just confirm that because now I've said it, I need to make sure it's right. Uh, Plan again, no, for selection, way before that. Vehicles and shooting weapons. Is this us? Yeah, here we go. So you've got the Tesla cannon. So, uh, Trying to find it. Weapons have two penetration values. Uh, the lower value is used against infantry and artillery, the higher value is used against vehicles. While targeting infantry and artillery, the weapon um, arcs to nearby unit targets after a successful hit is rolled, roll D6, and that's the number of additional hits that's inflicted in the unit. So it hits one thing and it skips around it, which is quite, quite flavoursome. Um, that is quite cool. Now the other thing you're getting with these guys is these bipedal walkers and these are kind of the iconic um, American things. So you're looking at, you know, you've got, as far as, as, far as this game is concerned, some remarkable little models, I think. Um, and they have a number of them. So the Coyote Walker is the one that's in the starter pack and it looks brilliant. The big advantage of being bipedal is you can do assaults. So it can assault, it's got a fist, which means it can, um, from what I can recall again, it means that they can punch and do all kinds of weird and wonderful things. And I would love to ch triple check that. So they can, um, effectively, they can do close, count, close quarters and they can kind of fight. So powered fists are, imitate the functions of a hand. Um, and they basically allow it to fight in game. So you can imagine them sort of punching punching their way out. You've got the Jackal Light Walker, which hasn't appeared yet, but has got um, Agile and Jump. So it can jump really well, which is cool. Um, and again, it's got Assault. You've got the Grizzly, which has got um, an only tank gun. This is the one that you're seeing about quite a lot at the minute, um, with the gun in the middle of it. Um, it's got high explosive for the anti tank gun again, it's got assault so again it can go into close combat. Um, and then you've got the Bruin, uh, which hasn't been released yet, um, 
and it's a medium walker. It's got this howitzer. It's got no indirect. It's got howitzer, but it's got no indirect fire. But um, for it, it does have a pentel mounted heavy machine gun, and it's the howitzer is useful for up close. Um, basically, it's, it's used uh, to support against heavy defences. You've got the Kodiak. You've got a lot of these. That are, I hope you get the idea. You've got a lot of walkers. The Kodiak has got um, flak, so it can, which is quite useful, and it's got machine guns, two machine heavy machine guns, um, and then on one hand two heavy machine guns and light and auto cannon. The other one, so it's really good against infantry. And the mud skipper, um, which is again based around, let's see, platform to give jump infantry some um, genuine punch. So the idea of it is got machine, got medium machine guns and heavy machine guns, and two fists. So again, it can punch. This is this is actually you're looking at. So you're looking at a very with the Americans. You're looking at this very Walker heavy kind of faction. Now the one that I'm interested in. I've got a German fight. I've got a German bolt action army, so I'm going to start out with the Germans. But eventually, I think I'm going to go British and Commonwealth because actually I quite like them. They've got keep calm and carry on rule, um, which basically means that um, recognizing that rash ac it rash action often precedes disaster. Much emphasis is placed on calm thinking. British infantry given a down order may remove one pin marker as if they passed an order test. Which is quite useful in this game. They've got bombardment, which is same as as, as, as really great. So they can, uh, when rolling the effects of a proprietary bombardment instead of rolling one dice for each enemy unit, they can roll two dice and choose the best result. Bet, so they get better artillery. They've got artillery support. Um, so they can include one artillery forward observer for free. And the bit I quite like is this national characteristic. So let's have a look. So basically, they don't say which ones these are for, but you can, if you know your history, you can work it out. Up and atom. So a force with this, with this rule automatically passes any order to launch an assault. As long as they're um, not green, basically, or inexperienced. Blood curdling charge. A force with this rule prevents enemy units from carrying out a stand and shoot reaction. Again, not an experienced green. Tough as boots. And you pick one of these. All regular and veteran infantry units in the force will bonus attacks when in close quarters. Rapid fire. All any rifle armed regular or veteran unit with this rule rules bonus dice when fire when shooting. So for every three man they roll an extra dice. And vengeance. If this army if an army has this special rule, any regular or veteran unit given an order which is within twelve inches of an enemy unit may try to remove one pin marker before attempting an order test. It's got a 50-50 chance of doing it. And these are quite flavoursome. These are quite good rules, I think. In terms of what they actually bring to the table then, they've got a slightly different setup. The the Brits, the big the big iconic unit they've got is this guy, the automatons. And these are kind of their interesting unit. Now they do have um, automated infantry sections and there's um, and they do have armoured infantry sections as well, but we'll talk about those in a minute. So the automatons, the automated infantry se sections are slow. They have got a set of rules which limit them in a lot of ways, but the big thing they've got is they don't, they're not subject to horror. And if you're fighting the Russians or the Germans, which predominantly they will be, this is a big deal. It means these units aren't going to run away. Because the horror, the horror rule is actually very, very useful, and can really freak out guys. So it makes them very resilient against things like the Shrek Wolf. Um, the armored infantry, they've got a slightly different approach. So um, it was decided that any armored troops should be capable of providing a punch beyond that of current infantry. Thus, British development of the Gal Galahad armored suits tended, intended to overwhelm opposition strong points. Though limited number, careful and considered use has meant that they've got a growing and largely victorious reputation. They're also very expensive. It's 150 points, but they carry light MGs. They are tough, they're slow, they're resilient. They've got tank, tank um, grenades, 
and you can boost them up. So they're quite they're quite feisty. They're quite formidable. Um, the automatons basically they're, they're key kind of just they're key unusual current uh, um, unit in terms of tanks. They receive a lot of tanks from the Americans, but they don't actually have. As far, uh, they've got a Cromwell T, which is similar to the American ones. They get a Tesla cannon on it. Um, their tank just their war um, their walkers. They get three of the walkers. They get a Guardian, which is a variation of the U um, U.S. Coyote, and it's basically. Um, virtually identical. The only difference is some difference I think with the machine guns. Um, they've got the Grizzly which is just a direct copy from what I can see and they've got the Coyote itself. Okay so the Coyote itself is a little bit cheaper but doesn't have um, quite the same armament so it doesn't have a flamethrower basically. The, the Guardian has got a flamethrower in there. I quite like the, the look of the British, if I'm honest. I think they're, they're quite cool. And they've got um, an automatic carrier, which is just going to, uh, could look awesome. And I think they're, they're kind of going to be one of those factions that it looks right. It looks kind of very British and quite, could be quite fun. The Soviet Union, let's go to them. They're the last ones of all that we've got at the moment. Now, a lot of these we don't have pictures for because the models aren't released yet. But with the Soviets, they've got mass batteries. So you can, uh, when rolling for fire for effect, an artillery barge roll 2d6 and take the higher result before adding the 6 inches. The good quantity has got a quality all of its own to represent the vast far, far manpower available. They get a free 11 man strong squad of inexperienced with all possible options you have models for. You get the Great Patriotic War, which means that they get a re roll for, let me see. Whenever a unit of, artillery, of infantry artillery fails a morale check, uh, take the test again and apply the second result. Um, and then they've got not one step back, which is the commissars. Uh, so they ruthlessly step in morale by making examples of troops falling, failing their duty. Uh, when a friendly infantry model fails an order within six inches, remove one model from the unit, re-rule the test. Note there is no choice in the matter. Uh, the second result stands as normal, so they're really good against mor for morale checks, basically. Um, they have an odd, they're, they're again they've got the heavy infantry, and their heavy infantry look very different. They look quite dust-like, if I'm really honest. If I can see a picture, I'll use it. Yeah, so this is what they're looking like. So they're quite um, different. They, they're kind of the idea is they're basically quite cheap and. Cheap and nasty. Um, they have got a different approach. Um, they they basically cumbersome and bulky. They lack subtlety, but their effectiveness is not disputed. Unlike other nations, their heavy infantry is considered more of an anti-vehicle unit, and they have dual uh, dual weapon systems. So you can select a submachine gun or an anti-tank rifle, and it goes through what the stats are. They're slow. They're resilient. They've got tank, tank, uh, large infantry and tank hunter. They're quite expensive as well, but that's sort of standard. The Siberian Terrors, as far as I can make out, are these things, I think. And they are the ones with, yeah, the ghouls. Um, predominantly, they, they're armed with knives. They're going to be the same as the Shrek Wolf and, and the Nachtjägers. They're up close and personal kind of units. They're going to attack. That they they don't have any ranged ranged uh, weaponry. Although in that this case you can upgrade them to give them SMGs. Um, they're fast is the big thing that stands out about them. And from what I can gather, their major function and you can actually give them uh, flamethrowers. So what they're going to be doing, I think no no they they take no damage from flamethrowers. Sorry, um, the submachine guns, the knives. These are not the infantry unit. They're going to scare the living. They don't get horror actually, which is quite interesting. So they don't cause horror. So they don't necessarily cause the morale checks that horror does. Ursus infantry. We don't. I don't. I think these are the bears. Um, are large, resilient, tough, horror, tooth and claw, which gives them extra assault attacks and strong. They don't have any weapons. Um, they're 66 and you get 3, so 22 each. They look pretty formidable, I think, in terms of 
you know, just just the way they are. Um, so the Russians are set are are quite interesting because they're setting themselves up slightly different than the Germans, but in a similar kind of feel in a lot of ways with those weird genetic, quite vicious type um, units. The got daughters in the motherland don't know very much about these at all other than their stats. So with them, they're, they've got fast, fanatical tank hunters and tough, and they get quite an extensive variety of um, extra bits they can get, but they come with assault rifles, they're quite expensive, they're veteran, and they've got low level DNA enhancement. Then we have some of the, then we've got the normal units we had before. In terms of their um, tanks and their special kind of tank unit, it's, if I can find it, they've got a shockwave, and basically what that does, they've got a tank that creates tremors. And, let's see if I can find that. That's quite. Quite interesting because basically what it can do, if I can find it, is I'll read it out. When firing a shockwave weapon, draw a line in a straight line out from um, to the weapon's maximum range. Any unit within a, with a model under the line is hit in a four plus and suffers D three D three pin markers. Um, and and an infantry and artillery that are hit also suffer D three hits with a penetration value plus one. Vehicle hit vehicles hit suffer crew stunned damage uh, result. So in terms of actually neutralizing enemies, this isn't going to destroy them, but what it's going to do is it's going to just freak them out. So it shakes the ground. And, and it's quite a good looking model. It's, it's in the book. I can't see it at the minute, but it's, it's a really nice one. Now Cossack, which is that, the, their walkers are more limited and they're more simple. But they've got a reggae rules so that can run and run out. They're they're basically neck and tag off everybody else. So they're looking at it and they're going, okay, right, we'll have the bipedal bit off the uh, Americans. It's light. Um, it's not particularly great, I think, but but it, it, it looks good. Um, then they've got a mammoth mammoth heavy walker, which is the exact opposite. They get a light walker and a very heavy walker. Um, and it is going to be mental, I think. It's a, it's a super heavy walker. It's just looking at its um, weapons. Turret mounted light howitzer, one front facing casement with a heavy howitzer, one turret mounted light auto cannon, one turret mounted light, another turret mounted light auto cannon. This thing's just going to fire lots and lots. It's super heavy, and you can replace any light auto cannon, auto cannon with an HMG. This is going to be carnage to any um, infantry that you deal with. And so long as you're you're you've got and you've got something to handle the opponent's um, tanks and armor, that's fantastic. Japanese aren't out yet. Um, I'm just looking through to see if there's anything else that stands out as being new from bolt action, and I can't see it. So the four units. This is the um, shockwave tank. So it's quite cool. The four unit, the four nations that we've seen. Um, what you're looking at, so basically, the Germans horror based, which fits with the fascism thing, because you think, yeah, they would if they got new technology, they would be devastating. Then you've got your Brits, who are a bit sort of odd, I think, in a lot of ways with the automatons. They look quite odd, but that's quite eccentric, and I quite like that. You've got the Americans, where it's all about speed and close assault, and and that fits with. American style and exaggerates it and then finally you've got the Russians where you know Stalin is a dictator and you've got very they're, they're quite happy to use genetic uh, modification if they need to and a lot is about supporting the infantry and charging forward with it. Um, as a whole I actually think the nice thing about Conflict 47 is so far what it's doing is it's exaggerating the differences which were a little bit too small for my taste in, in bolt action. This is making those four factions feel very, very different between the rules and the units. And I, I really like it. Hope that's been useful.
I know it's been a bit rambling, but I hope it's been useful. As ever, please like, share, comment and subscribe. And have a great evening.